Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from 1 John chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 10. And it says, Beloved, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And he know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. Thank the Lord again for his holy words. And I believe that the word of God is clear to us this morning. You know, we often quote, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. But I don't believe that many of us have ever stopped to consider what that text really means. But here, this text this morning, or this passage of scripture, gives us a little more enlightenment in relation to that, that text. For it says, Behold what manner of love the Father God had bestowed upon us, bestowed upon us in the form of His Son, when He could have chosen to destroy us because of our sins, He gave us His only begotten Son that we might be saved. And so, what a love! How many of us are willing to go the extra mile and make those kind of sacrifices that God has made for us? Now, not saying that you should go and kill anybody now, but think about the ultimate sacrifice you can make for God, a sacrifice that God will accept and bless. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Think about it. Whatever it is, think about it. Because here God did not withhold His only Son. His only Son. But gave Him up as a token to a rebellious people who did not even treat Him well or with the respect that He deserved when He came. But they were quick to kill Him and to destroy Him. But thank God for the reason he came because if God was like some of us we would not be here today because we would have destroyed those who offend us but thank God for his everlasting love and his mercy and so he has made that sacrifice he has bestowed his love on us and he has called us to be his sons and his daughters and then we go and we misrepresent him. 
and because we are God's sons and daughters, we also reflect the character of our Father. But the world don't know us. Why the world do not know us? Because they do not know our Father. They don't have a relationship with our Father. So how are they going to know us? And so the Word of God says that they know not us because they do not know Him. We don't know what God looks like. And all of us sometimes we go off the deep end and we try to come up with what we think God look like or what God supposed to look like, whether he's supposed to be black, white, pink, yellow or whatever. But is that that important? Is it that important to know what God looks like? Because I'm telling you that for those of us who love to be, we call them specific, as it relates to whether God is black or white, pink or blue, we are going to be disappointed. As a matter of fact, we're not going to want to go to heaven because if God should come back and he's black, we're going to be disappointed and we're not going to want to go with him. And if he comes back and he's white, it's going to be the same thing because we are saying that that's not what he's supposed to look like. He's supposed to look like me. But we must be careful of the kind of thoughts and the kind of projection we put out there because it might come back and bite us. Nevertheless, the Word of God tells us that we do not know what we will look like or what we will be, but we are assured, according to Scripture, that when He comes again, when He appears in the cloud, He said that He's going to transform us, that we will look like Him. In fact, scripture tells us already that we were made in God's image. Whatever that interpretation is, whether we look like him physically or in character wise, but I believe it meant both. To be made in his image, I meant I I believe with all my heart that he's talking about both. But nevertheless, we continue. It says that every man that have this hope, we purify ourselves, even this. We purify ourselves in Him because if we are going to go with Him, then we've got to get rid of all the things in us that are not supposed to be. Uh huh. So we need to walk as He walked. We need to be identified with Him. And so He gives us a couple clues as to what His children look like and also what those who are not his children look like let's go into it. in verse 4 it says that whosoever commits sin do, does what transgress the law remember we spoke about that a few days ago that god's law and god's commandment are important and cannot be denied and laid aside just because we feel like so they must be kept they are a part of God's government and His authority. They are God's character. They are the very essence of God. So if we don't want to keep them, we are basically denying God. And so, what does the law do? The law teaches us wrong from right. It teaches us obedience. True? And so if we are keeping the commandments of God, then we would not commit sin. Because what? Sin is the transgression of the law. We break the law because we sin. True? And so he, and so God came because of our transgressions. He came to take away our sin so that we can be reconciled to him. And I say amen. And that is why when we are reborn, we are restored and we are what now covenanted back to him. And it says in verse 6 that who abideth in him sin not. So if we are now restored in him, if we are with him, walking in his way, being obedient to him, then we will not sin because what? We would have been keeping his status and his commandments. Do you see? So it therefore means that if we are not keeping his words or his commandments, we are not his sons or daughters. 
Do you see that? So whosoever seen it had not seen him. And that is why when we see sometimes those of us who profess to be children of God behave some kind of way and not out of ignorance but just behave that way because that's who we are we know that we have not met Jesus yet because God children behave like him sounds a bit harsh but it's true that's what the word of God says if we are walking with God or said that we are walking with God then our character our life should represent him and I'm not talking about the slip and slide that hap happened now again I'm talking about blatantly being disobedient presumptuous and just defiant and disobedient I'm talking about that the slip and slide and not talking about that because every one of us slip and slide every now and then but when we slip and slide, we must get a hold of ourselves. And when the Holy Spirit prompts us, we need to repent and we need to change. Okay? So, those who practice sin, basically, they are children of the devil. And those who practice righteousness, they are children of God. That's basically what it is saying. Because this is who Satan has become. From the moment he sinned, he has become the father and the creator of lie, deception, and destruction. And so, naturally, if that's who you are and that's what you are doing, you don't know who you represent. So if all you do is kill, steal, tell lie, backbite, hate, and all of these things, you don't know who your father is. You don't know who your daddy is. You don't even have to ask. And nobody need to come and tell you that that's your daddy. Because according to the scripture, that's your daddy. Because that's exactly who Satan is. I'm not calling you Satan now. But you get what I'm saying. So, friends, this is not all to beat down on anybody and to judge anybody. But it's just to help us to understand that if we are walking with God, then we need to do the things that will help us to identify with God. We need to make a choice. If it is for God or it is for the devil. Who will we serve? Are we going to serve righteousness or unrighteousness? Because that's what it comes down to. And so, when we have been washed of our sins, because that's why he came to wash us of our sins, then we need to walk in that newness and that transform new life. We need to now reflect the character of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so the world can see Christ in us. And so they can know who we serve, who we belong to, and come to join us at our Father's feet. I pray this morning that we will really be encouraged and I pray that we will continue to trust God and continue to look to Him because He wants to save all of us because He loves us as His precious children. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.